Hey gang, Jeff here with missionmusician.com and mixpractice.com and I uh, want to shoot a little video for you today. I have been away for quite a while and uh, some people have started to mention it on my YouTube page. I apologize with the holidays. Uh, I have seven children and uh, it gets a little busy and to be honest with you, I've been mixing two albums. Um, and mastering one of them. So we're going to talk a little bit about mastering today. Now I'm not going to go into, uh, you know, big, long, um, you know, hour long mastering, uh, tutorial. Uh, just want to show you kind of what I've been doing lately. Uh, I've added a plugin into my chain that I don't normally use and that's the slate FGX. Um, and I'll get to the reason why in a few minutes. Um, but I just want to kind of run over over you really quick. <laughs> run over you. Run over with you really quick how I tend to master these days and what I'm doing, what my chain looks like. Um, and it does change and evolve uh, as I uh, progress in mixing or uh, in mastering. Um, but for the most part, um, I'm using the same stuff that I used years ago. Uh, I just kind of give the song what it needs. If it doesn't need much, then you don't need to do much to it. I think there's this big uh, mystique in mastering, and there really shouldn't be. Not, I'm, And again, I'm not trying to discredit guys who do mastering for a living. There is a real skill involved in what they do and I'm not trying to take anything away from them um, with posting a video about mastering or anything like that um, but my goal is to show you guys that you can in fact master your own stuff um, if you know if you don't have money to send it to you know a mastering house or you just don't trust someone else with your own stuff you can definitely do it and it's not that hard so let me play you a mix this is an album i just finished uh, by Lawrence Olivier um, called Vessel uh, and i want to play the first track on it just a little bit of just the mix no mastering going on here this is just the mix so let me play just a little bit of this Sometimes you don't know what it takes, it takes to carry on. You've got to find the joy in the pain. And I've seen the levees break and bleed her with the waters from Lake Pontchartrain. Since he just can't take that kind of beating, so can you really blame a man? bourbon and the spirits coming down tell me how long will i have to wait all right so super cool song by a super talented artist uh i really really enjoyed mixing this album it was a lot of fun for me uh, because I got to mix a whole bunch of instruments that I am not used to mixing stand up bass harmonica uh just fiddle, just all kinds of crazy stuff. And I really enjoyed mixing this album. So as I listen to the mix, I hear that it, to me, it sounds good. To me personally, it sounds good. It doesn't sound like it needs much. It just needs to be brought up to commercial level. Now, could I go in and tweak some things? Yeah, sure I could. Um, but for the most part, the mix itself sounds good to my ears. Um, so there's a couple things that I want to do, um, to enhance, uh, how it already sounds to so just put a little bit more polish on it. I'm not talking about a lot. I'm just talking about doing some little moves. So I feel like the vocal could be a little airier. The cymbals could be a tad bit brighter. Um, now when I mix this album, the, all I, all I had were the drum stems. So I'm sorry, not the drum stems, the drum bounce. So I only had two tracks to work with. So um, I tried to really focus 
and EQ those uh, drum tracks the best I could as they were, and then supplement them with you know some samples if I needed more punch out of the kick or snare. Um, so let's start with right on the track here. And I guess before I do that, you'll see all these other songs in here. This is how I master. This is his whole album. I have his whole album brought into a mastering session that I created. Um, and that is how I do it. I just kind of line them up. And the reason why I do that is so I can tell from one to the next, Do I, you know, is one sounding brighter, is one sounding, sounding darker. So... You know, I kind of know what I need to do for each song. And I normally start with the first track and kind of get that to where it needs to be and then compare that with, I'm sorry, compare the other songs with that first track. Um, and then I also bring in reference tracks as well. Um, but I'm not going to go into that here. So what I normally do on the track is I'll add a little bit of uh, VCC, um, just to get some vibe going. And um, again, as I said, this I, I feel like the vocal could be a little airier, a little brighter. Um, one thing I'm going to do before I even do this is right here I have my Sonarworks headphone uh, reference calibration, whatever it's called. So I'm using Sennheiser HD 650. So I'm going to turn this on. So it's going to sound different to you. Once we're done, I'll turn it off, uh, and it should sound normal. Sorry about that. So I have it on right now, so it is affecting what I'm hearing through my headphones. Um, all right, so let's bring this up, and let's turn this off and turn this off. Sometimes you don't know what it takes, it takes to carry on. You've got to find the joy in the pain. And I've seen the levees break and bleed her with the waters from Lake Pontchartrain. All right, so I don't know if you can tell, but this is just giving a little bit of mid color. I don't, I don't even know how to explain it. But it, to me, it sounds better with this on than with it off. Um, the guitars come forward a little bit. You can see I am not driving this up hard at all. Uh, I got to drive at like seven, um, and I've backed the input way off. So you know we're not even getting close to uh, hitting the red here. Sometimes you don't know what it takes it takes to carry on. To find the joy in the pain. No. I also feel like the kick drum comes a little bit closer to me, which I like. All right, let's see if we can address the vocals. Now, why did I choose Custom Series Equalizer? Well, because this is a pretty forgiving uh, EQ. Um, I can boost up, and it's not going to sound bad. Um, so let's let's try to boost this up a little bit to where the vocals get a little brighter. Sometimes you don't know what it takes, it takes to carry on. You've got to find the joy in the pain. And I've seen the levees break and bleed her with the waters from Lake Pontchartrain. Since he just can't take that kind of beating. All right, so the vocals come a little bit more forward. Now, one thing I'm going to do is I am going to high pass up to about 30-ish because um, I don't want any low and rumble. Now, I did this when I mixed a song, but this is just kind of fail-safe thing that I always do. All right, so let's go down to the mastering chain. I have VMR here, VTM, uh, FG Red, Isotope, and then FGX. And what is this? Uh, this is just a meter. Okay. All right, so let's see what I have on VMR. Okay, let's see. I'm going to reset everything here. Just have a couple EQ set up and then uh, VCC mix bus. So I don't know if I'm going to use this or not, but we'll, we'll just see here. Let's, let's play the song and bring this in. Sometimes you don't know what it takes, it takes to carry on. 
yet to find the joy in the pain. And I've seen the levees break and bleed her with the waters from Lake Pontchartrain. All right, so I like what that's doing. I don't think it needs any more EQ. We can we can uh, test the low end by boosting, you know, around 100 and see what it sounds like. Sometimes you don't know what it takes, it takes to carry on. You've got to find the joy and the pain. And I've seen the levees break and bleed her with the waters from Lake Pontchartrain. Now, here's the, here's the thing that gets tricky because that, to me, sounds better with the little bass boost. Um, but I know from experience that it can get tubby on some systems. So I'm just going to leave it off. I think the low end is good, uh, personally. All right, so let's open up VTM here. And I normally set this on half-inch two-track um, with the 456 and 30 ips. Um, let's see what this brings to the table. Sometimes you don't know what it takes, it takes to carry on. You've got to find the joy and the pain. And I've seen the levees break and bleed her with the waters from Lake Pontchartrain. All right, to me, that's kind of rounding over the kick tone. Um, and uh, I like what it's doing to the vocal, too. Let's listen one more time. Sometimes you don't know what it takes. It takes to carry on. You've got to find the joy. All right, now, that sounds pretty good to me. I, I'm being very mindful of where the vocal's at. And what I may do is go back and bring this down a little bit. I don't want it to get too S-E, too harsh, anything like that. I don't want to have to throw, you know... Uh, some kind of multi-band compressor on there to tame the S's. Uh, so I may back that down. I'm going to skip over FG Red because I don't know if I'm going to need it or not. So let's turn on Isotope. And what I want to do first is I want to give the song uh, a feeling like it was recorded in a, everything was recorded in the same room. So I'm going to add a little tiny bit of reverb in. Um, so let's listen here. Turn this up a little bit. I'm gonna turn. I'm gonna emphasize it a little bit so I can hear what's going on. All right, so I'm getting rid of this low end so it doesn't muddy up my mix. I don't need, you know, I don't need the kick drum, the, the bass guitar, uh, to have any reverb on them or not anything down low. Um, and then I don't want the S's and T's to sound like they have reverb on them. So I kind of rolled this back to around 3.2 kilohertz. All right, let's mess around with the pre-delay just a little bit. All right, now I'm going to bring this down, um, and then we'll blend it back up. Uh, don't really want to go over like 15%. I don't want it to be too noticeable. Uh, I just want it to kind of gel the mix together just a little bit more. Sometimes you don't know what it takes, it takes to carry on. You've got to find the joy and the pain. All right, let's push it up till it's too much. Sometimes you don't know what it takes, it takes to carry on. You've got to find the joy and the pain. And I've seen... 
All right, now I'm gonna play it and just stop it real quick so I can kind of hear the tail of the reverb. Sometimes you don't know what it takes. All right, so it's kind of a pretty uh, fast uh, release, pretty fast tail, which is what I want. I don't want it muddying up my mix. All right, let's see if we want to do any harmonic excitement. And uh, so this is a multi-band harmonic exciter, so I can move these bands if I want. Um, I normally like to keep this around 150. Uh, that's good there, and that's fine there. And then we have four different algorithms we can use. Warm, retro, retro, excuse me, tape, and tube. I like tape, and I like warm a lot. Tube is a little bit uh, aggressive, uh, especially for this type of music. I may use it on metal or hard rock, um, but for this kind of laid back uh, song, uh, I just kind of want warm. And we can solo and hear what it's doing here. Let's just do that really quick. All right, let me put it on tube and you can see how drastic it gets. Right, so I don't want that. Um, in a rock song, it might be okay, but I'm just gonna add a little bit here, maybe 0.6, somewhere around there. It doesn't take a lot. I'm just looking to enhance the song by adding a little bit of harmonics to it. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. Sometimes you don't know what it takes, it takes to carry on. You've got to find the joy in the pain. And I'm seeing the levees break and bleed. With the waters from Lake Pontchartrain. All right, you got to be really careful up in these upper frequencies because it can tend to make it harsh. Um, I do want some excitement happening there, but I don't want to get too crazy. And same thing on the on the real high end up here. All right, now this does add loudness to the mix. All right, so if I bypass this, it's gonna seem quieter. Sometimes you don't know what it takes, it takes to carry on. You've got to find the joy in the pain. All right, so that sounds pretty good to me. Uh, does it need to be wider? Mm, not really, um, but that doesn't stop me from adding a little bit here and there. What I like to do with the bass is bring it down so it's almost completely in mono. Uh, so let's listen to that. All right, so there's some guitars down around 150. Uh, I can hear them. So I don't want to pull this down too much. I'm just going to pull it down a little bit. And what I could do is just scoot this down a little bit more. Um, but that's going to affect. So once I move this, it affects everything else. So you see the, uh, harm or the uh, I'm sorry, the, yeah, the harmonic exciter. It has moved to 105 to copy this, but that's okay. Let's just do that. All right. Sometimes you don't know what it takes, it takes to carry on. You've got to find the joy in the pain. All right, let's listen to this. Sometimes you don't know what it takes, it takes to carry. So it just pushes it out just a little bit more, um, which I like. I'm, I'm digging that. And you can see I haven't made any huge moves here. Okay, so normally this is where I would turn on Maximizer and start bringing this thing up to volume. But I'm not going to do that. I've been using... Uh, 
here lately, I've been using the FGX. Why? Well, one simple reason. It's this constant gain monitoring button here for me. And you'll see what I mean in a minute. So um, I'm not even going to use the compressor. Uh, if I need to compress, I'll go over here to the FG Red and I'll use that. Not that there's anything wrong with this compressor. Um, so we have a low punch and a detail, which is a high punch, your, like your snare. And then we have a gain to where we can bring the volume of the track up. Um, then we have some dynamic perception here. And then we have the uh, intelligent transient processing here. And this is probably a little high for this song. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this song up to level. And you'll notice as I bring it up to close to commercial level, so somewhere between negative 8 and negative 10, somewhere in that area, you'll notice that it's not getting any, any louder uh, in your speakers. That's because we have constant gain monitoring on. So I can bypass the plug-in and listen to the mix and then turn the plug-in back on and there won't be this huge volume difference. Uh, that is awesome because I want to try to retain the mix the way that I mixed it. Um, and it's kind of hard to do that when you are when you bring it up to volume with a limiter or whatever and then you bypass it and the volume just drops away, right? So let's, uh, let's turn this on and let's bring it up to volume first. Let me scoot this up a little bit. Sometimes you don't know what it takes, it takes to carry on. And if I would turn the right uh, knob, it would probably work a little bit better. So I'm going to try that again. And by the way, I am going to turn off my Sonarworks uh, headphone reference uh, right now because I'm not doing any EQ moves or anything like that. So here we go. Sometimes you don't know what it takes, it takes to carry on. You've got to find the joy and the pain. And I've seen the levees break and bleed her. All right, so we're pretty loud now. We're pushing into negative eight territory. Um, so that's good. So let's see, let's listen to the transients of the kick and the snare when I bypass this plug-in and see if we need to make them punchier or not. Let's just take a listen. Sometimes you don't know what it takes, it takes to carry on. You've got to find the joy and the pain. And All right, so what I notice when I bypass the plug-in is that the bottom end kind of loses a little bit of weight. So let's turn up low punch some here. Sometimes you don't know what it takes, it takes to carry on. You've got to find the joy and the pain. And I've seen the levees break and bleed her with the waters from Lake Pontchartrain. All right, and I feel like we need to turn up the high-end detail as well. Sometimes you don't know what it takes, it takes to carry on. You've got to find the joy and the pain. And I've seen the levees break and bleed her with the waters from Lake Pontchartrain. Since he All right, so let's mess a little bit with the dynamic perception just a little bit. And I think I may have to turn this uh, ITP up just a little bit. Sometimes you don't know what it takes, it takes to carry on. You've got to find the joy and the pain. And I've seen the levees break and bleed her with the waters from Lake Pontchartrain. All right, so now I feel like it's there's not a lot of difference between when I bypass 
and uh, when the plugin's on. All right, so I know that when I bounce this down, I'm going to retain my mix. Now, if I were in if I do bounce it down, I have to remember always to turn this off so the actual volume comes back up. Um, so let's just look at what we've done. I'm going to leave FGX on, um, but I'm going to, let me drag this down here. And I don't think I need the compressor. So let's just kind of turn this off and then I'll turn them on. Let's just take a listen. Sometimes you don't know what it takes, it takes to carry on. You've got to find the joy and the pain. And I've seen the levees break and bleed her with the waters from Lake Pontchartrain. Since he just can't take that kind of beating. Okay, now we are adding some gain with uh, the harmonic exciter. Um, so yes, it is louder, but you can tell that it, it definitely has a little bit more polish, a little bit more shine on it, and sounds a little bit more finished than if we just turn these off and listen. Sometimes you don't know what it takes, it takes to carry on. You've got to find the joy and the pain. And I've seen the levees break and bleed. Okay, so the point of this isn't to get into too much detail, but to just show you that you absolutely can uh, master your own stuff. And if it doesn't need something, don't add it just because you see me adding something or, you know, whoever, you know, Dave Pensado, uh, David Glenn, whoever. Don't just add it because someone else is adding it. Add, add what you need. If you need to EQ your song a little bit, if it's kind of low on the, uh, or if it's kind of thin on the low end, heck, go in there and put an EQ on and just raise the low end up a little bit. Now, we're not talking about doing drastic moves here. We just want to make sure that our song is kind of equal to um, commercial music. Um, so, you know, if you feel like it's kind of dull in the top end, then don't be afraid to boost. Just be careful when you do it and listen to what is happening as you're doing it. You know, are you bringing out the cymbals in a pleasing way? Are you bringing out the air in the vocal in a pleasing way? Are you starting to get some harsh S's, um, when you boost, you know, you may have to bring that boost up higher. In other words, if you start it like... I don't know, 5K, 6K, 7K. You may have to bring it up to like 12 or 13K and just boost up there so you're not getting those hard consonants and the, and the, and the really harsh S's. Um, but if, if you find that you are getting that, even with just a little boost, you may have to go back to the mix and, and put a de on the vocal. You know, Don't think that I just bring all these songs into a mastering session and start putting plugins on them and then boom it's done if i actually hear a problem and I, I can tell you on at least two of these songs as i started mastering i went back to the mixing phase um i one of them i didn't feel the kick drum was sitting right so i went back and i remixed the kick drum i did what i felt needed to be done and then i brought that, but you can see this one right here. It says Outlaw Bounce 4. It's I, I remixed it maybe two or three times before I I've thought it was ready to be mastered. So that's kind of my point. If you know if you bring it in and you start mastering and you, you figure out that it's just not sounding right, you may have to go back and remix it again. And I'm not talking about you know necessarily taking all your plugins off. I'm just talking about go back and Tweak something that's boomy, tweak something that's harsh, tweak something that sticks out to you as not sounding well uh, when you start to master it. Because when we master, we want an already killer mix track, and then we just want to enhance it a little bit. All right? So, anyway, that's it for this video. I'm going to have, <laughs> I've got a bunch of videos coming. Um, I, f I feel bad because I haven't been on YouTube for, I think, November 14th was my last uh, video that I posted. 
um, and we're already, what, it, December 7th. So I do apologize. I do plan on having more videos. As a matter of fact, um, I'm going to start a video series, I think, called Mixing Fundamentals, uh, kind of getting back to the basics of mixing. Um, and it's not going to be just a, you know, a boring little uh, YouTube kind of, uh, I don't know what I want to even say here, uh, video series. It's, you know, I think it's going to be actually really, really good and hopefully a little challenging for you guys. And, and so you can put these concepts into play. I also have another video that uh, it's getting ready to, that I'm getting ready to shoot. One of my mixed prax, practice members, excuse me, I cannot speak, uh, po posted a question on mix on mixed practice forums. And I thought it was a really, really interesting question. He said, he asked if, if I could go back to my younger self and tell me three, three and only three mixing tips uh, that I could tell my younger self, what would they be? And that just really provoked me, uh, provoked my mind to start thinking. And I've got some interesting answers. So I'm going to shoot a little video on that as well coming soon. I apologize for being away, but um, I'll, I'll get back on the ball, guys, I promise. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will talk to you really soon. Thanks. Bye.